This is Washington Business Report with ABC7 National Correspondent Rebecca Cooper. And welcome to your fresh look at business and finance in the Washington region. Coming up, how a Washington restaurant powerhouse was built on passion for the business. We sit down with the head of Carmine's. Our one-on-one -on -one interview with the a la carte family of restaurants is, that has been around for more than 20 years. You might recognize names like Carmine's Restaurant in New York City's Theater District and right here in D.C.'s Penn Quarter. You would think that the CEO of a la carte had a plan all those years on how to turn his restaurants into multi-million dollar success stories. Well, that's what they are, but when I sat down with Jeffrey Bank, I found out that he has a personality as large as the portion sizes his restaurants are famous for. But he didn't have a plan. Instead, he had a passion. Jeffrey Bank, welcome to Washington Business Report. We are at Carmine's, and every time here, I'm here, it's always busy. How do you keep people coming in the doors? Uh, it's just very fortunate. This is a great town. Carmine's is a great brand, and it just I think it's the right fit for this city. How did you decide that Washington would be the right market for you after New York? So we started looking around different cities, and we always loved D.C. It's a very unique spot, besides being the capital of our country uh, and all the politicians and all that's going on here. You have tourists. You have the Penn Quarter, which is a community now, is what it was not 10 years ago. Um, so we started looking at D.C. and we started realizing, you know, look, with the way the economy is right now, there probably isn't going to be a cutback in the federal government. So you have a strong local market. Tourism, people really want to visit the capital. Like maybe they'll stop going to um, Yellowstone Park, but they're still going to come to D.C. And we figured this would be the right spot. And here was this giant 20,000 square foot spot um, with a lot of the mechanical and goodies that you don't see, the air conditioning, plumbing, and this and that. And when we came in and you looked around, to the naked eye, we looked like, oh, this is going to be a crazy build-out. For us, the goodies were left here. You were at University of Albany, yes. sociology major, poli-sci minor, right. interned in the New York State Senate, thinking you're going to be a lawyer. Yes. And you ask a neighbor, can I work for you in your office? But he owned restaurants and said, no, go work in the restaurant. Take yes. it from there. What, how did well, you Well, you know, I wanted to take the summer off and figured I'll go to law school next year. And my neighbor was the wealthiest person I knew and carried a briefcase and drove a beautiful Corvette. And I said, what do you do? He says, I buy and sell restaurants. I said, okay, I'm in. He's like, no, you're not. <laughs> you're 22 years old. You're not buying and selling anything. I'll tell you what, I'll put you to work one of my restaurants. I'm like, no, you're not. I don't know how to work at a restaurant. So he put me in charge of a restaurant in the South Shore. And I had no idea what I was doing. I look back to those days and I don't know how I didn't put us under. But when I came in, we were doing $20,000 a week, which is a million dollar business. To me, in 1988, I was like, ooh, a million dollar business. I moved it to two million. So then he gave me another restaurant. And I, I, we started another restaurant. And then he gave me a third restaurant. And all of a sudden, I'm running three restaurants. And again, I don't know how we were successful, because I know what I know now, and I know what I know then. And somebody looked out for me because we did okay. But you were. No. And then you uh, bought Artie's Deli, opened it up in New York City. It was an 80 seat deli and 2,000 square feet, and we did almost $5 million. Phenomenal sales, very successful. But what I read about you that I find fascinating is many people dream of getting away from the corporate job and owning their own business and calling all the shots. You were doing that with Artie's Deli and decided. It was not as much fun to have one restaurant. You wanted to get back in the game of multiple restaurants, and that's when you went to a la carte. I got bored. I, I love the deli. It's, it was my baby. Uh, I think we opened in October of 99, and my daughter was born in December 99. I tell her she's the middle child, even though she thinks she's the <laughs> oldest child. She's really the middle child. Already is my baby. Um, and I got bored. I started helping out on the Carmine side because I was bored on the deli side. And every day, a little more, a little more, a little more, until finally one day, I left the deli and I started working in the a la carte office full time. Um, and then I worked there for a couple of years and I, you know, helped us leave the island. That's what we call it. <laughs> you know, we went to Tropicana in Atlantic City, uh, the Bahamas. Um, I became CEO in 2005 of a la carte. Um, we then did our deal in DC. And last summer we opened up in Las Vegas in the forum shops. So where are sales now? How many employees does a la carte have? We have approximately 1,600 employees across all the different locations. And we'll be very close to our finally hitting some triple digits of 100 million. Wow. Yeah. So now what are the biggest headaches for you as CEO? How to keep that growth going or 
What keeps you up at night? So I appreciate the question, but I'm just going to change one thing. We consider ourselves very fortunate. Restaurant industry is a tough industry. You are manufacturing food. You're also selling the food. You're selling a perishable product. You have 1,600 employees to empower and keep happy. Um, there's a lot going on. So we consider ourselves very fortunate. Our sales have been great, whether there's a recession or not. We do really well because we provide a lot of value and because of the quality of the food. And we're very consistent with our food. We run a, chefs are going to get mad, a McDonald's-like uh, mentality in the back of the house with very high quality. So if you eat chicken parm here in New York, Bahamas, it's phenomenal. It's exactly the same. And so you, you say you, you want consistency so that they can go to any car mines and know it's the dish they love. That's the key to success. How do you keep we promoting low prices and sustain this kind of a setting? Volume cures all ills. And we are really big on volume. It's a large restaurant, 750 seats, 800 in Vegas, 550 in New York. My father always said it was rude to go to a restaurant and share an entree, that you have to respect the restaurant by getting a meal. You're okay with it, you say? So we have two sides to this. Everything is family style and large value. You have to understand that the food comes. If I have an entree that's $24 and two of you ate it, you're paying $12 a person for dinner and you're going to have food left over for the whole week. And you're okay with that? Of course I am. And if four people came for, for the meal, you're paying $6 a person. You're still eating like kings. This is the kind of place that you can find your, your neighbor that you don't really like. I think we won an award once, the best place to pick up the bill <laughs> because you're going to get the best value. And I've actually had to read it twice. I'm like, compliment or insult? And I'm pretty sure there's a compliment in there. What's your favorite thing about being in the restaurant business instead of being a lawyer like you planned? Well, it, I never would have known this before I went into it, but my biggest pleasure is watching my employees grow. Nothing makes me happier than watching someone who's worked for me get married, get a house, see that this just isn't a part-time job. They created a career and that we help with that. And for a guy who says he didn't know what he was doing to CEO, well done. Thanks Thank for joining you. us on Washington Business Report. It's a pleasure. Report. It's a pleasure. Thank you.